So I know August has already been crazy with sneaker releases. We've had Travis Scott fragments. We've had Air Jordans that look like Wu-Tang dunks. We've had all sorts of sneaker releases, but it looks like the second half of August will also not disappoint. What's up everybody? I'm Seth Fowler and this is Sit or Sell. In today's episode of Sit or Sell, we are talking about the important sneaker releases for the second half of August 2021. I give you my thoughts on each one of these releases and whether I think each one will sit on shelves or sell out immediately. Now, if this is your first time to the channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell down below if you haven't yet. And also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. This series has been by far my longest running series on the channel other than I guess just general sneaker reviews, which doesn't really count as a series. And it's been going for some years because it's a series that I really love and you guys seem to enjoy. And I feel like the month of August 2021 has been one of the most insane sneaker release months that we've ever had and it just keeps getting crazier and crazier. I mean even just for the second half of the month we've got Yeezys, we've got New Balances, we've got Jordans, we've got collaborations, we've got all sorts of crazy stuff. I think even Nike Sakai Fragments which is kind of a crazy collaboration. Oh really quick before we dive into the video I just want to give a shout out to my second channel which is kind of like my tech or I guess unboxing channel because I've actually got an unboxing of the brand brand new Pixel 5a, which I don't believe has actually come out yet. Google was actually nice enough to send me out this phone early to check out and unbox for you guys. So if you guys would like to check out that unboxing or really any other tech unboxing or tech review on that channel, make sure to click the link in the description below. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it. So because this video is coming out a little bit later than usual due to my Las Vegas trip last week, I'm starting things off on August 19th rather than the 15th because the 15th was like four days ago. So the first shoe dropping on August 19th are the New Balance 550 RLEs. So as I'm sure you've guessed by this point, this shoe is a collaboration between RLE and New Balance on a pair of 550s. However, unlike a lot of the previous New Balance collaborations, RLE decided to go for a purely monochromatic look. This entire shoe comes in a very simple and clean creamy white look, and what's interesting is that there doesn't seem to be really any color variation between panels and the midsole of the sneaker. And a lot of times when a sneaker comes in like all one color, like all white Air Forces, it's not the most exciting sneaker in the world, but it's a clean simple look that's pretty easy to rock. And I feel like that's the case for this pair of RLE 550s. It's not the most eye-catching shoe in the world, but it's something that you can throw on with pretty much anything and look good. And honestly, the 550 silhouette is super hot right now, so even if you're wearing a shoe that doesn't catch that much attention, just the fact that you're wearing a pair of 550s, people will take notice. And because of that, I do feel like there's a good amount of hype behind this sneaker, and for that reason, I'm giving the RLE New Balance 550s a sell. Next up, also dropping on the 19th, we've got the Nike Dunk High 1985 in the red acid wash colorway. So right off the bat, this sneaker is special. It's not a collaboration, but it's cut like the original 1985 Nike Dunk Highs. I personally love the fact that Nike is sort of going in this really cool retro direction where they're cutting shoes like the Air Jordan 1s and now the Nike Dunks like the originals. You really don't notice how different the modern version of these shoes is versus the original version of these shoes unless you see them side by side. And so the fact that Nike is giving us a re-release of these shoes, or I guess a retro of the silhouette of these shoes, it gives us the opportunity to really see how these sneakers have changed over time. And honestly, when you put a colorway like this on a pair of Nike Dunk Highs, this shoe is gonna be a hit. This shoe is gonna go crazy. I'd say I'm generally a pretty big fan of acid wash, so seeing red acid wash on a really great silhouette just makes me really like this shoe a lot. So as you can see, the upper of this shoe comes in a gray leather accented by red acid wash overlays and a slightly oversized red Nike swoosh. In addition to that, you've also got an aged yellow midsole and rounding off the look, you've got a bright red outsole. And I really wasn't expecting to say this, but as far as Nike Dunk High releases go this year in 2021, this one might actually be my favorite. I don't know why, I didn't think that it would be, but thinking back on all the other dunks that we've had so far and all the dunks that are upcoming, this one's the one I think I'd like to wear the most. It's just a dope look, and red's my favorite color, and I think it all just looks great on this shoe. Now, unfortunately, because this shoe will definitely be popular, it's gonna be pretty difficult to get, and for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. And then finally, rounding off August 19th, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 14 Alele May Fortune. So I would guess based on the name of the shoe and the color of the shoe that this shoe is inspired by money. I mean, the shoe features like money green accents and gold hits, so it makes sense. However, in addition to that, it seems like the shoe also comes in an incredibly premium makeup. The entire upper of the shoe is covered in a light tan suede. And as much as I love the materials used on this shoe, which is usually the reason why I love a sneaker, the colorway on this sneaker is fire. It really seems like Alele May used some sort of like 
like marbled green on the midsole, which really makes the shoe stand out. And when paired with the bright gold accent on the midfoot, it just pops. I haven't always been a huge fan of the sneakers that Aleli May puts out, and it makes sense because they're made for women and I'm not a woman, so it's not targeted towards me. However, this shoe I think is her best work, and this is a shoe that I would love to pick up. I mean, seriously, the more that I see this shoe, the more that I wanna grab it. I love 14s in general. It's not my everyday shoe, but it's a shoe that I like to throw on every so often, and this sneaker is probably one of the best 14s to drop in a while. And of course, because this shoe will most likely be very limited, and it's also a very popular colorway, I definitely see this shoe selling out. Moving on to August 20th, we've got the Ivy Park Adidas Ultra Boost OG in the Navy Rodeo colorway. So Beyonce and Ivy Park have been collaborating with Adidas for a while now, and this is just the latest in their collaboration. This Ultra Boost still features a lot of the Ivy Park hits that we've come to know from the previous Ultra Boost Ivy Boost. Ultra Boost Ivy, what? But this time around, it comes in a completely tonal navy look. And I've gotta say, the navy that they picked for this shoe is very, very clean, and I love the fact that it covers the entire sneaker. On previous Ivy Park or Beyonce Ultra Boost, there have been hits of other colors, like on the original maroon colorway, there was an orange outsole, which I actually really dug, but on this shoe, they're keeping it very simple with the minimal navy, and I think it looks great. Now, it does look like they changed up the knit pattern for this Ultra Boost from previous Ultra Boost. I'm not sure exactly which Ultra Boost this knit pattern is from, but I'm not mad at it. And overall, I think it's a very clean and very good looking Adidas Ultra Boost. And knowing Ivy Park collaborations, this shoe will be very popular and probably pretty limited. And for that reason, I definitely think this shoe will sell. Next up, we have three different colorways of the New Balance 2002R as part of the protection pack. Now, I say this all the time because it's just true. I love New Balance, and whenever they release something like this, I have to have it. So this pack comes in three different colorways, Phantom, which is like a tonal gray look, Rain Cloud, which comes in a dark gray, and Sea Salt, which comes in a primarily white and cream look. But it's not so much the colorways that make this pack so exciting, it's the way that they decided to cut the panels on the upper. So I don't really know a lot about this collaboration, I don't know the reasoning for this design, but I think it looks incredible. The panels on the upper are cut in this sort of like jagged way. It actually kind of reminds me a lot of the J Balvin Air Jordan 1s without the crazy colors. It's a great look, and I really love of how sort of sharp and spiky it looks. Maybe that's a protection idea. Maybe it's like it's protecting your foot from the elements. I'm not sure. Out of all the colorways, my favorite by far is the Phantom colorway because I love the tonal grays used on the upper. I think it's an incredible look and I love how crazy it looks while still being somewhat subtle because at the end of the day, it's still gray. But they're all such clean colorways and I'd be happy with grabbing any of them. Now, unfortunately, from what I've heard, these shoes are only releasing at like one or two retailers, so they're not gonna be that easy to grab. And New Balances in general are pretty hot right now. In fact, I think they might be the hottest that they've ever been. So because of that, I do not think this pack will be easy to get, and I definitely have to give these shoes a sell. Also dropping on the 20th, we've got the Jordan Delta 2 in light photo blue and orange. So if you're not familiar with the Jordan Delta 2, it's essentially a new lifestyle sneaker that Jordan brand has released. It's not really for anything other than being comfortable on foot and looking good. Now personally, my problem with this shoe is not that it's not comfortable, it's that I don't think it looks that good. And with that being said, I don't think it's a bad looking sneaker. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just not good enough looking for me to want to run out to the store and grab it. And it kind of seems like that's just the norm when it comes to Jordan Delta sneakers. It was a good idea in theory, and it wasn't executed poorly. It just wasn't that exciting. And because of that, it seems like Jordan brand is almost competing against themselves. Like if you walk into a sneaker store and you see a pair of retros and then a pair of like the new Jordan Deltas, you're gonna pick the retros because the retros look better, they have a better history, and the colorways are usually better. So I don't know, the Jordan Deltas just don't do it for me, and I don't think they do it for a lot of other people, and so for that reason, I'm giving these shoes a sit. Also releasing on the 20th, we've got the Air Jordan 36 First Flight. I know there have been some like limited drops of PEs, I think to maybe just influencers or in super small quantities, but this is the first GR of the 36 to drop. And unfortunately, it's in a colorway that's not that exciting. It comes in purples, whites, and oranges, and it's kind of a weird look. I said this in a live stream a couple days ago, but I feel like Jordan brand releases their crappier colorways first, so that everyone who wants a pair of Air Jordan 36 first runs out and grabs those colorways, and then as they progress and release more colorways, the better colorways start coming out so that those people go back to the store and buy the better colorway when it finally drops. And I feel like the only thing that would help this sneaker sell is that it's the first Air Jordan 36 to release, so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Continuing on, on the same day, August 20th, we have a lot of sneakers releasing on this day, as you all can tell. The next shoe dropping is the undefeated Nike Air Force One Low 5 on it. 
So this undefeated collaboration comes in a pretty clean, primarily white look. But what's interesting about this undefeated collaboration is the naming, the colorway, and the materials. So the name of the shoe, like I said, is five on it, which means five strikes, which is the amount of strikes in the undefeated logo. And because of that, undefeated decided to use five different materials and limit themselves to five different colors on this shoe. So it's a pretty cool sort of callback to the logo of their brand. And as we've seen in the past, undefeated has released some pretty incredible collaborations with Nike. And to my knowledge, all of the collaborations they've dropped so far have sold out. And I think that's probably going to be the case with this shoe. I think the undefeated Nike Air Force One Low 5 on it will definitely sell. In addition to the AF1s, Undefeated is also dropping another collaboration with Nike on a pair of Nike Dunk Lows. Like the AF1s, these Dunks are also called 5 on it because they use 5 different materials and 5 different colors. However, the colors used on these Dunks are pretty different than the colors used on the AF1 Lows. Rather than coming in a primarily white look, this shoe comes in a primarily blue and purple look and definitely stands out a little bit more in my opinion. The upper of the shoe comes in primarily blue with a purple midfoot panel. You've also got a bright white Nike swoosh and a bright white Undefeated logo on the heel. In addition to that, you've also got sort of an aged yellow midsole and a purple outsole. And if I had to pick one of the two shoes in this collaboration to pick up, I would definitely pick the Dunks, and I feel like that's how most people are thinking as well. So even though I think the undefeated AF1s will sell out, I think the Dunks will sell out significantly faster just because as of right now, it's a much more popular silhouette, and I think the colorway just overall is cleaner. Continuing on to August 21st, we've got the Air Jordan 12 Utility. So this shoe is sort of like a new take on the Air Jordan 12. The upper of the shoe is pretty standard. It comes in black leather. You've got some quilted accents and of course some small hits of orange. But the real thing that makes this shoe special is the fact that this Air Jordan 12 comes with a Nike Grind outsole. So Nike Grind is essentially Nike's recycled outsole rubber that they use on a few different sneakers. So the way that Nike Grind is made is they take scrap rubber and end of life rubber, grind it all up and mix it in with some new rubber materials to create a recycled outsole. And not only is the outsole recycled, it also has this very cool speckled look, which I really like. Now personally, while I love the fact that this Air Jordan 12 utilizes recycled materials on the sneaker, I think that the colorway that they chose wasn't the most exciting. And I feel like for a shoe like this, it's really trying to push recycling and the future of recycling. They needed to do something a little bit more interesting and something that would really make people run out to the store and grab the shoe. It's honestly just kind of like a dull black and blue Air Jordan 12. And the fact that the outsole is a very very similar tone to the upper of the shoe just doesn't really work for me. I wish they had made the outsole like a bright color or maybe made the upper of the shoe a bright color or maybe even incorporated Nike Grind into a classic colorway. Like can you imagine a pair of taxis with some Nike Grind in the black outsole? I think that would look sick. While I probably won't be picking up a pair of the Air Jordan 12 utilities for myself because the colorway just is not for me, there are definitely people out there who will like this colorway and at the end of the day it's an Air Jordan retro and so for that reason I'm giving this shoe a sell. Also dropping on the 21st, we've got the Adidas Yeezy 350 V2 Lite. So this shoe is a color changing pair of 350 V2s. Now, unfortunately, it's not as exciting as it sounds. So essentially this shoe is just like a white or off-white 350 V2 that features sort of a, a light tan colored stripe on the side. And the thing that really stinks about this shoe is that the only part of the sneaker that actually changes color is the stripe, the plastic stripe on the side of the shoe. And it changes from like a light tan to an orange. Now I know I've mentioned this a lot in the past, but my sock brand Apothecary has dropped a couple different pairs of socks that come with color changing knits. There was one that we did that changed color because of temperature, there was one that changed color because of UV. So I know that it's something that you can do, and I know that it's something that you can do in a ton of different colors. So the fact that only the stripe on the side of the shoe changes colors and not the entire upper of the shoe, and not only that, the fact that it just changes from like one shade of tan to like a slightly darker shade of orange, I don't know, it just kind of bums me out. They could have done so much more. Like for example, they could have made the upper of the shoe white like it is and then had it change to a pink when you step outside. That would be sick and that's a pretty common knit color when it comes to color changing knits. I don't know, it just kind of seems like a missed opportunity personally, but I am actually getting a pair in the mail in the next day or two, so make sure to stay tuned for that review because I'm gonna be putting this shoe through its paces and finding out how it really looks in person. So if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss this upcoming review because honestly, it could be dope or it could suck, I don't know, it really depends on the shoe. All that said though, it is still a pair of 350v2s, and 350v2s are pretty much as popular as they've been for the last year or two, so for that reason, I definitely see these shoes selling out. Moving on to August 26th, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Low Starfish. Man, it's crazy to me how hyped up Air Jordan 1 Lows are at the moment. That was a shoe that back in like 2016, 2017, you could walk into the outlet and pick up Chicago's because no one cared about them. And now the Chicago 1 Lows are going for like thousands of dollars. I still don't really like them that much. Unfortunately though, I should have picked up a bunch of pairs and sold them and 
paid for the house or something. I don't know, I could've made a lot of money off those shoes, but I didn't know that this was gonna happen. It seemed like something that just would never happen. But hey, it is happening, and it seems like Jordan Brand is capitalizing on that by releasing the Air Jordan 1 Low Starfish. And if you haven't noticed by this point, the Starfish colorway looks oddly familiar to the Air Jordan 1 Shatter Backboard 2.0s. In fact, it's the exact same colorway as the Shatter Backboard 2.0s, and that's probably another reason why this shoe is so hyped up. I think this colorway is fine. I definitely like the shoe. If I could find it at a discount, I would probably grab it and honestly I'll probably grab it now for retail if I can just because I need a shoe like this for the $20 sneaker collection which by the way if you guys have not watched that series make sure to click the link at the top of the screen but uh it's not something I'm like extra hyped on it's not something I'd pay resale for but it's not a bad shoe it's a good looking shoe I understand there's a lot of hype there and obviously this shoe will definitely sell out Continuing on to the following day, on August 27th, we've got the Nike Zoom Freak 3 in the Orange Freak colorway. So obviously, Giannis got his first ring with the Bucks. It's something that, as an East Coaster, I never thought would happen. Not because Giannis isn't an incredible player, just because I thought his team kind of sucked. They never made it to the finals, but now they have. They've proved us all wrong, and... I think because of that, his shoe will probably do better than it would have done if he hadn't won. And personally, I think it's kind of coincidental that the Nike Zoom Freak is actually the best looking Zoom Freak so far. In fact, I think the shoe, the modern sort of like soft, curvaceous look that it has is really, really clean. Also, I keep watching press conferences of Giannis and I just think he's like the best person ever. He just seems so cool and so nice. Now this release is kind of interesting because like I said, Giannis now has a ring and I think because of that, his shoes are gonna be more popular, but I haven't seen really any of his previous colorways sell out. So because of that, I'm going to give this shoe a sit, even though it is possible that it could sell out. I'm not sure. Also releasing on the 27th, we've got the Nike Air Max 90 Laser. So I'm sure you're familiar with the laser branding on Nike sneakers, but essentially what it means is that the upper of the shoe has just been laser etched. And on this pair of Air Max 90s, it seems like they've just used one panel on the upper of the shoe and laser etched in the shapes that are usually panels, and also given this shoe like a really cool sort of wood grain look. This shoe actually looks more like a dress shoe than a running sneaker, which is kind of weird. I'm personally not a fan of this colorway on the Air Max 90. I think the laser detail is really cool, and I know a lot of people are hyped on this shoe, but it's not something that I would really want to pick up. I do have to say though, that I think the wood grain pattern works really well on a laser etched shoe, especially since when you laser etch a leather, it gets darker around the edges because it gets burned. So when you do that on a pair of sneakers that are supposed to look like wood grain, it gives the shoe a much more dimensional feel. I mean, I'm into the pattern, I'm just not into the sneaker, and I don't know what the hype level is on this shoe, so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Also dropping on the 27th, we've got the Nike Air Hirachi Aquatone. So this shoe is pretty much your standard Nike Air Hirachi. It features a white leather upper accented by pinks and teals, and it's actually a very clean colorway. I mean, it's definitely got sort of a Miami vibe to it, and it also looks like a classic pair of Hirachis, and I think overall, it's just a great look. I mean, it really takes a lot to make a pair of Hirachis look bad when they have a white leather upper. It's, it's kind of tough. You can put any accent color on the shoe and it usually looks pretty clean. Now, even though this is an ultra clean colorway, I don't know if Hirachis are as hyped up as they once were. So because of that, I just don't think there's that much interest in this shoe. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. And then finally rounding off the 27th, we've got the Nike LD Waffle Sakai Fragment Black and Blue Collaboration. So Fragment has gone collaboration crazy with Nike recently. We've got the Travis Scott Fragments, we've got the Fragment Nike Dunks, and now we've got the Fragment Sakai LD Waffles. And what's even crazier is that there's not just one colorway of the shoe dropping, there's actually two, but the second colorway drops a couple days later. This first colorway comes in the very popular Fragment Blue, or as they're calling it on this shoe, the Blackened Blue colorway. It's not black and blue, it's blackened blue. And of course, because this shoe is also a collaboration with Sakai, it still features those Sakai accents like the doubled Nike tongues, the double Nike swooshes, and the double midsole. And in kind of an interesting detail, it features the fragment text sort of laser etched or printed onto the side of the midsole. This is actually a collaboration that we've known about for a while, but we didn't know exactly when it was dropping, and it seems like early access for this shoe, or at least the gray pair of this shoe, has already gone out to people. In fact, my friend Osman got early access to the shoe, as well as getting early access to the stupid off-white Nike dunks. He's gotten everything. I don't get it. The shoe itself is fire. I like the look a lot. I prefer this one to the gray one because I think the blue is a more fragment color. And I think overall, it's kind of just more of the same when it comes to Sakai and Nike collaborations, just a different colorway. But at the end of the day, it is still a Sakai and Nike collaboration with a third collaborator on it, Fragment. And because of that, this shoe will be insanely hyped and will probably sell out very, very quickly. 
Then moving on to August 28th, we've got the Nike Dunk High 1985 Acid Wash Black. So this shoe is a pretty similar sneaker to the red Acid Washes, which are releasing earlier in the month, except instead of coming in like a red and a gray, this shoe comes in a white and a black. Well, I guess not totally a white and a black because the upper leather of the shoe comes in like a cream or I guess off white color. And then over top of that, you've got the overlays, which come in the white and the black Acid Wash. And of course, like the other Acid Wash Dunks, you've got an aged midsole. It comes in the 1985 cut. And on this particular the colorway, they round off the sneaker with a black rubber outsole. Now, while I really dig the look of this shoe, I think this is an awesome pair of Nike Dunks, and I would love to have it, I still think I prefer the red colorway, like the UNLV style colorway, to this colorway because I just like red better. I don't know what it is. I, I just like that shoe better. This black acid wash, though, is still a fire look. It's still a shoe that I'm definitely going for and will most likely be just as popular. And so because of that, I'm definitely giving these shoes a sell. Also dropping on the 28th, we've got the return of a grail with the Air Jordan 4 Lightning. So the Lightning 4s have been a grail for people for years. And the fact that Nike's actually bringing this shoe back, is kind of crazy because it's a sneaker that we never thought we'd ever get back. And I know for a lot of collectors out there, it's kind of disappointing that this shoe is coming back if they had a pair in their collection because it's probably gonna hurt the resale value of their pair or I guess the hype of their pair. But for someone like me who never had a pair of Lightnings, I'm stoked on this shoe because I'd love to have a pair for myself. Now, unlike the original Lightning 4s, there should be a a lot of pairs of these available. I don't know how many pairs we're gonna get, but I would assume it's probably a lot. And again, I'm stoked because this is a shoe that I've wanted for a while, and I finally have a chance to grab it for a not insane price. As you can see, the shoe comes in a bright yellow, or I guess lightning colored upper, accented by grays and blacks. And on the midsole of the shoe, you've got some dark grays and some whites rounding off the look. I'm genuinely surprised that Jordan Brand decided to take this shoe out of the vault, especially when a lot of their sneakers right now are selling out without any issues. Usually when a brand does this, it means that they're either uh, trying to rehype the brand or um, they don't have any other ideas, which I don't think either of those are the case. So I'm interested to see them doing this. And again, I'm stoked on it. Now, even though there's probably a good amount of pairs of these available, or at least that's what I would think, I don't think it's gonna be too limited, but I don't think it's gonna be a GR. I definitely think the hype is there for this shoe. And for that reason, I think the Air Jordan 4 Lightnings will sell out. Then on August 30th, we've got the second colorway of the Nike LD Waffle Sakai Fragment collaboration, this time in light smoke gray. So this shoe features pretty much all of the same details that you found on the other colorway. You've got double Nike swooshes, double tongues, and double midsoles. In fact, a lot of the details on this shoe are the same as they are on the blue colorway, except the main difference between this shoe and that shoe is that the upper of this shoe comes in gray, and that one came in a dark navy. Personally, I really prefer the navy colorway. It's just a more classic fragment look. And while I like the gray look of this shoe, it's just not, I don't know. It's just not for me. Regardless though, it is still a Sakai Fragment Nike collaboration, so the hype is there. And because of that, I definitely think the light smoke gray Nike LD Sakai Fragment Waffles, that name is ridiculous, will sell out. And then finally, rounding off today's video on August 31st, we've got the Nike Dunk Low SE NY versus NY. So I think I actually talked about this shoe in a previous sitter sell, or maybe it was a weekly heat. I'm not exactly sure which one it was, but it seems like this shoe has actually been pushed back. And like I said in whatever video that I talked about this shoe in, this shoe is fire. This might be my favorite Nike Dunk to release all year. This shoe is crazy. So apparently the inspiration behind this shoe is the rivalry between New York streetball teams. And because of that, it comes in sort of like the NBA Parks colorway. The shoe features a forest green leather upper accented by white overlays as well as an orange Nike swoosh. And although I don't usually like semi-translucent outsoles, I think the outsole on this sneaker actually ties the shoe together. I actually don't know why I like this colorway as much as I do. I'm not usually a fan of greens and oranges, but for some reason, this color blocking is it for me. Like, I love this shoe. Now, unfortunately, this shoe is gonna be popular not only because it's limited and it looks amazing, but also because it's a Nike Dunk Low and those are some of the most popular silhouettes available right now. So because of that, unfortunately, this shoe will definitely sell out and sell out stupid quick. But with that, we pretty much wrap up the entire month of August 2021. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on all of these releases and which shoes you're looking forward to most, so make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.